Everyone wants things overnight, the overnight success, both people, uh, couples that are doing the same route we went, and also even the coaching world, the industry, people out there who have come into money for a few months and all of a sudden they're the experts and the coaches and they're really just fakes and frauds and, and really have not been through the fires and, and figured it out and created the frameworks and the blueprint. So our, the purpose of this show is to show you that it is possible to have this work-life fulfillment and work-life alignment, not work-life imbalance. So go from the, from the chaos to the order. 100 stars, 100 weeks, didn't change it. Experiments, development, intelligence, and patience. I'll, don't give up on your future. We all start losers. We're all late bloomers. Gotta Cause struggle through the floor. Cause I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'ma do shit my way. What's up, freaks? Welcome to the Russian and the Freak Show podcast, episode number one. Now, we've done several live shows before with the Russian Freak, but this is the official transition over to the podcast platform. And let me tell you, today on the Russian and the Freak Show, we're going to take you back. We're going to take you on a journey, our journey from where we started to where we are right now with the lessons and the stories that led us to this point where we are. And it kind of gives you a little bit of context about what this show, what this podcast is going to be about in the future. Now, this show really, when it comes down to it, is really for anyone that can check off any of the following or all of the following, right? basically for a married couple that, that lives together, obviously, hopefully, that are business partners, entrepreneurs that work together, that work from home, that have kids, and even to the next level, kids that are homeschooled. Yes, we take it on a journey in what happened years ago like we really did things steve in reverse right we we thanks kind for of, the update we kind of started all of a sudden you're here and it's just like <laughs> <laughs> well like this the, what is it meerkat when you call me when i go like this oh my gosh well we well let's start settle with, down settle down you're, you, you wanted me to have be sitting energy. on my lap in a second oh yes i would love Holy that cut cut <laughs> no listen that is an interesting cap you've got we there. We will never get this, anything We're actually going to change this show. this show. It's going to now not going to be called The Russian and the Freak. It's going to be called Indiana Jones and the Freak. It's going to be called The Russian, Indiana Jones, and the Freak. That is an interesting cap you got there. Holy crap. Where did you get that thing from? Where did you get that? I don't know. Were we in New Mexico or... Or Texas, somewhere. You can't even keep the, track of where you buy your shit from because there's shit coming no, in every day from you all know over the freaking world. I can't because there's some we curtains coming from so Italy. Much. We travel so much that I just forget. You know, your forget. back is almost to the camera. There's one, one thing of like having a conversation, but your back is to the camera. Might as well just hear it. <laughs> I told you guys, I promise you that here. you cool. are going to laugh. It's impossible not to laugh at this show. We didn't even start it anything, but. Let's pause right here. Let's go back to the beginning. Why are you whispering? I just... They're just not going to fucking hear you if you're look, whispering. Look, so look. we did... Let, we go back to where we were. We did things in reverse. Okay, so what does that mean? Did things what in reverse? Well, in reverse, that normal people... You're me out Regular here, people Indiana. get married, have kids, start the business. But we really met each other. And within a few weeks she later, we start living together. To we... Whisper. Quit our jobs, we started business, we opened up a location, had a kid, got married, had another kid, moved to California, bought a house, pulled kids out of school, started homeschooling. So this is like in 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 short way to, to, to put it in a short way. That and then that all led to this very moment where we are the presidents of the Indiana Jones fan club. Thank you very much. I hope everybody like my head. You, for those of you who listen and you can't see, you probably will see that episode on YouTube. But yes, it's a really cool head. So let, what this really, when it really comes down to the mission of this show, if we do our, our job correctly on this show, is to kind of show you what the, what the mission is. It's to have a, a better idea of, I don't want to say work-life balance, work-life imbalance, going from order to chaos. And, and like chaos is happening right now <laughs> and every show, I would say, from order to chaos. Order to chaos to really show you and breaking down like step by step from the beginning, really reintroducing ourselves to you and showing you what it, what it takes to 
really help you develop your what we call your freak freedom, your ideal, your ultimate freak freedom lifestyle. That's really what what this is all about. Yes, because yes. We, we, when, what I when I think of um, yeah, you know like years ago, uh, we always have that that ideal lifestyle. Like we always were saying, okay, we wanted to build the business and have kids and travel with them, have the time for them. And all these pieces started, started being put together in, in that one big, beautiful picture, like these little puzzles. And that's what we're doing right now. So we wanted to really show you that this is all possible, that you can get what you really want in life. But there is a one thing, one important thing that you have to have a vision because so many people wanted to go somewhere, but they don't have a plan. Like they, not even a plan. You need to just dream of something. You need to have that ideal lifestyle that you wanted to have. Because if you don't, don't have this, how can you get there? How can you go somewhere if you don't really have uh, the direction where you're going? So I think the, the first, my question for all of you who are listening and who are watching us would be like, what is that big vision? What is the lifestyle that you wanted to have? Like, how do you picture yourself? You can, you can, you can think of a year, three years, five years, 10 years, but be specific because more specific you get on something, the more uh, ideas will come to your uh, to your head. Ideas and opportunities come to your life. I think the people that you meet, the opportunities, and then you're gonna be able to say, you know what, this is what I want to grab. This opportunity I wanted to grab, and I want to go for it. And that's it's aligning me with the direction where I'm going. And this is important. And why? Because. If you if you if you take all the opportunities, you say yes to everything, you gonna lose the sense of really where you're going. Holy shit. Was that the long version or the short version? Because make sure that you don't just discuss and talk about your vision so long that by the time you're done explaining it, that it's too late to even implement that vision. God, this but, is your zone of genius, I tell you. What? This this whole thing, always. Like talking like that. So by the way, nice shirt. I really like the freak gold apparel. It stands for freak. It stands for freak. Yeah, because it's it's red, it's, it's green. It literally it's says blue, the word freak on it, so I'm guessing it's And it's it black, it's like all these colors, really cool. So back to this vision. Back to, let's get back on track. <laughs> Some of us have the attention span of a So yes, create the vision, but then visit it every day and work towards it every day. But why work towards it? The only way to work towards it is to reverse engineer it. Like we literally put it apart. All right, what is the vision? Where are we looking to go? What does that ideal freak freedom lifestyle look like? And then reverse engineer it. Put the pieces into place from the beginning. What are the daily disciplines we're going to have to have? How are we going to need to operate in order to do this? And we are going to take you on a ride way back on this journey and just going to flow you through the last almost, I don't know, how long has it been? 23, 24 years? How you long has it been? always add some years. How long has it been? You don't even know when we got married. You don't know. 19 you, something. You don't know. Way back in the 1900s. And, and at first they thought that maybe you pretend, but I think you don't know. I have no fucking clue. But you're so good with numbers. So how is that? It's got to be a dollar sign behind it. Then I could bam, <laughs> I'll get that freaking yeah, sure. mathematics right away. You don't even know when it's my birthday. Somewhere around my birthday. <laughs> Somewhere around mine. Okay, when is when was Tyson? So born? let's just make sure we get on track. We don't want to lose track of the show. Let's keep things. Uh, uh, yeah, in order. But you know what? It's like you said. You have to go back. Even Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs said too that in order for you oh, to like track your track your steps, it's mm. always going backwards. That so is, this is this is some old <laughs> fucking deep shit right there. Deep shit. Like, we can end the show right there. Just take the mic, drop the fucking mic, and show over. We are, yeah. We are fucking cured. Yeah. So, so that's where we're going to take you today on this episode as we kind of reintroduce ourselves to you. But can you tell me, in general, what is this, this show about? Like, what is, what is this show all about? Well, this show is all about the crazy lifestyle. How to maintain your equilibrium and function in a dysfunctional world as a freak family in business and in life so that you can transform chaotic complexity into your own personal normalcy. You that's lost me they, at, you lost me at hello. That's what the show Hold is on. all about. 
Hold on. I gotta. Just one type. second. One. I'm just pulling up Google Translate to figure out what the frick you just said. And you oh, equilibrium. I didn't get. I didn't even. I couldn't get the first. You said how to maintain your equilibrium. I didn't know. What, all right, got it. How to maintain your equilibrium Google and function Translate. in a dysfunctional world. Yes, that, that is overall the general scope of this show, but it, and I've told you who this show is for, the type of people that it's for. Again, those married couples with kids who work from home, have are entrepreneurs, work together, have kids, again, that are even homeschooling them. So combining all that together, taking that chaos and turning it into order. And that's really what this, what this is all about. How to win in business and win in family, the family life. And just relationships in general, that's what we're talking about. Real world situations for real people, real situations, real world, how to just get your shit together. The shit that maybe that you don't even want to hear, but the shit you need to hear. Because we, we, we belong to different groups with different entrepreneurs, homeschooling, other parents, other other couples and stuff. Just groups that we socialize with and people are not afraid... The problem is people aren't afraid to ask for help. The problem is they ask for help and then do fuck all when it comes to actually implementing the stuff that's given to them. So that's what I give you here is practical stuff to implement. So you're not just sitting there asking for help and spinning in this overwhelmed, chaotic fucking world to unclutter the fog and the mess that's in, in your freaking head. So let's take it way back. Let me set the scene for you here. The year was 19... 19 never. Something. Nineteen eighty-eight. Let's just say. You you're making me so old. The year was nineteen something, and there I am, and I'm in a, a adult a, a gentleman's club, and there's the performers on the poles, sliding up and down the poles, and it's late in the night. I'm out of dollar bills. I tipped her a French fry. She came home with me, and boom, the rest is history. The funny thing is, there's still people that, probably for 20-something years, that have been told this story about how we met, and I never told them it wasn't. So just so you know, every time they see you, they think that this is the story. I know, I realize this, that people think that this is the story, because you are so convincing so with then, everything you say, that they people believe in you. People believe you. So after the French fry thing, this happened to be a time when I was a personal trainer in a gym. I just got out of the Marine Corps, like, I don't even know, not too long out of the Marine Corps, a couple of years. And I'm a personal trainer in a gym. And it's weird. This same individual that I saw in, in the gentleman's club, I see working out on the gym floor. I'm like, huh, that's odd. What are the odds of that? That this is where they work to do, do their booty training and they get their moves down. <laughs> Little do you know, they nowadays you could hire a, a, a ass coach, a booty coach. <laughs> it's that tell you how to squeeze your butt and how to like do these weird ass exercises <laughs> that supposedly are gonna, I don't know, build your and they, can, can you the just steroid stop. booty coach or some shit? Because I will like, laugh this is nuts. the whole show. This is nuts. But that's what it is the mastery, your personal, personal, uh, the mastery you know, of the booty. Booty, yes, you can. That's what the the beauty of the world is nowadays. You can be become a master this of the booty. Just, this is just like mind blowing <laughs> knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb here. So there I am in the gym as a personal trainer, and there's the 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 booty coaching going on over there. And but I'm like, that's odd. It's the same performer I saw on the pole, the whole French fry thing. And there, that same individual is in this gym working out. And so I t I'm on a, a, a break or whatever, and I would work long hours. I'd wake up at 3.45 in the morning to drive like an hour to get to the gym. I'd open it up, and I'd train clients all day. So I'm on a, a couple minutes that I have in between coaching sessions, and I go into the personal trainer's office, and I see this little slip. It's like a personal trainer request form, and it's from this same French fry individual requesting a session with me. I'm like, all right, now this is going too far. This is turning into some like fatal attraction, like there's going to be a bunny boiling in a pot pretty soon. <laughs> this is some like stalker shit that's going on here right now. It's a little creepy. Hold on. You did not even know what I had to do. I, when I saw you at this gym, I'm like, I would like to have a session with this guy. I really like him. A I session? Think, what kind of session? Well, regular workout. Ooh, what do you regular. think? Regular. What a, Just, as a... Just work out, hold on. So I go to the front desk and I ask for a personal training session. So they give me 
other coaches, right? Our trainers. And I say, no, no, no. I want this one. The guy look at me. Yeah, because I was fucking busy. I'm loaded from beginning to end, like trying to make some damn money. It must be good. (laughs) And and, and I have to give up my paying sessions for this free session that someone all of a sudden wants. And I had to do a a free free, free session. Mm -hmm. Had to cancel my, because they said, no, you have to. And all of a sudden, this free session is on my calendar. So after like, oh, I don't know, one session, uh, this same French fry individual invites me out <laughs> to go t- to eat or something like that. After the workout. If After one perfectly. session. Like one session. Girls. Get like literally this session want. is over and I'm heading, we're heading out. And I say, oh, I know a great place. I know a great place to eat. All right. This is a lesson for the girls. Go for, go for whatever you want in life. That's what I tell you. I want and here we are that. like 27 years <laughs> later with like. A, a couple of kids and like 17 fucking animals run pets and running around the house and the property and the yard and all this we other might stuff. might be getting another one. No, we might. Talking parrot. Fuck no. <laughs> There's enough talking parrots around this damn house. So we leave the gym after one session, like literally the night before the, the French fry thing. So we go French fry next day, session, right after the session. Not even after like two or three. Like after one. On the way to eat. So I say, you know what? I know this great place to go and eat just follow me in your car so i driving it's a first were you afraid this is a to f- go on in a car with me you don't even remember this this is i do this is this is actually true. no because you asked what this what this keyword had to do with this whole thing so i'm driving to this i said like i know this great restaurant they got some great food a first date or whatever you want to call it after one session by the way so we're driving I pull in to the parking lot of McDonald's and I park in a spot and this one's in a car behind me following me thinking I'm taking her to McDonald's for a first date. And then I pulled out of the McDonald's parking lot. We went to the restaurant right next door. It was, like this guy what the hell is it called? Nuts. Is that New York Steakhouse? I said, these Americans are nuts. Was it called New York Steakhouse? That used to be called, it used to be called something. Something, but it was such a good they restaurant. They closed down now, but they're not even there anymore because of the corona. <laughs> they closed down. It. Mm-hmm. And so we're sitting there, and I'm not a very social individual. I'm not very conversational, if you can imagine. I mean, now, yeah, I've, you have now, not I've, got over this now I've grown into this just social butterfly, and I'm so charming and, and fun to be around and all this other stuff. But we're sitting there, and they bring out this bowl of these pickles, these Awesome fucking pickles as you're waiting to even before you do your order. I take a bite. I'm like, oh, this pickle is pretty freaking good. And then we put in the orders of the food and I'm sitting there and I don't really like, I'm not having uh, the conversation and this and that of the the stalker. There was no time to, I I don't know how I would have even gotten a breath in. I'm like sitting there. This is, this is called, this is called the pickles and the cocaine because I'm sitting there eating these pickles, looking at this person across me. I'm like, holy fuck. (laughs) How do you even say that many words per minute and not even take a breath? And you didn't even taste the pickles because you're too busy talking. Uh, didn't even order anything. I ordered no. this feast because I'm fucking starving because I trained all day. I know. He ate so much. I ordered so this much. feast. Everything. Blackened chicken and those garlic mashed potatoes. I remember yeah, it like it was yesterday. Yes. And Good. I'm, so you remember our day. How that, lovely. The blackened chicken because it was a fucking hell of a meal. Remember you that, remember everything. What were you talking about? And so I'm sitting about? there. I was talking about nothing because this... <laughs> I'm eating pickles while I, th- I, I seriously thought, I'm like, this chick is a cokehead. Like, I thought it was a cokehead. Because <laughs> really? it's like, oh, no, no. oh yeah, hold hold on, hold on. On. Back, back in the motherland in, 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 in Russia, we used to have big cabbage and, and we step on our bare feet and then we eat the cabbage. I'm like, wait, 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 hold on. The only thing I might have said is, you stepped on fucking cabbage with your feet and then ate it. No wonder they called sauerkraut. It fucking <laughs> tastes like funky ass, funky ass feet. Like, holy shit. But it's truth. And I will take you on a journey with doing this cabbage one day. I promise you. Oh, I promise. Can... Oh, please. Please do. I, I, I can't wait for that one. A, yes, I will do that. A journey on how to make cabbage with your funky ass, Listen, this crusty is fun toes. stuff for kids and their parents. All right. So the stalking is done. The McDonald's, the pickles, the cocaine, all that stuff. I don't need to say a word. So I'm like, actually, you know what? This is pretty cool. We should go. Because I don't even have to talk. I don't even have to speak. This is great. And... Then it's even better because then we move. So we move in together probably like the next day. No. It's probably like a day later. We're moving in together. The next day I have visitors, the the future in-law coming to visit from another country. And now 
of the most intense. There's there's speaking going on in another language. So I'm like this. I'm like you know what? This is a keeper. I go out on the dates. I don't have to say a fucking word. I'm in the house. They're speaking this wish wash wish wash shit that I don't know what the fuck they're saying all the time. I'm like this is perfect. I don't have to even be part of these conversations. I could just chill. Listen, so I'm learning something new every. So single I'm like this day. is perfect. We it. move in together. Then we I I start I leave. We quit our, well, first I start, I quit my job, start in home personal training business. I quit the job at the gym, literally left in the middle of this workshop at lunchtime because they were making these changes and trying to really just screw people over. It was a corporate, one of those big box corporate gyms, decide to leave, say, you know what? I'm leaving. And it's a hard decision, quitting the job. And then she was working all these different jobs between the, 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 Hold on, the nice. French fry job and the poles and no, selling listen. perfumes in like department stores, like harassing, you know, and those, those fucking Can I like, say, vultures. hold on, hold on, who is speaking right those now? Those vultures, they I come think? out and you walk by and they spray you with all oh, this shit, like they're pepper spraying you, like, what bitch, happened? bitch, back up. I feel like that pickle guy right now. I'm sitting and not saying a word. Can I speak? I, I, I once, I remember at, thinking after that, that first pickle and cocaine day, I'm like, there's got to be a limit that some at some point in your life that your voice box just stops working because you've used up your words for a lifetime. I'm you like, can't. this one had to have used up all her words by now because this is, I've never seen anything like this, this pickle cocaine Listen, I experience. wanted to learn English still. We're talking about what, 17 years? I was barely there for what, seven, eight years in America. It was still great for me. To learn, that's what it, that's what it was. I lost. So what lessons we have there? So so far we we did the French fries, the pickles. Hold on, the, the French fries guys did not believe this whole thing. And then French the fry thing. moving in together. And Hold on, let me just say it. So training, you, you were you, the jobs. Yes, you were you were working at, at the uh, at the gym. I was actually in the process. You remember, I was in the process of being certified as a trainer because. In Poland, when I I I went for no, certification, at that point, but at I that never point you were did. working at a real estate agency, and then Start. from there you were doing that, and then started working part time doing the perfume stuff. No, later while babysitting and doing all this other stuff, like more jobs than like more jobs than ever. But I had I had so many jobs. Yes, I had the babysitting in the morning, and I would go to the department store. That no, before I went to the department store, I was working in gyms. You remember all these gyms that I was working, but that was and after, I overtrained. That was no, that was I. I started trained. First, we've done all this other stuff. I said, why don't you get in the fitness industry? This is the direction we're going. We made this decision. This is the direction we're going to go. And then you start doing those classes and you teach like these aqua aerobics, like these 90 year old ladies. In the, Not in the thing. only. That was fun. I was working in all these different gyms doing the step aerobic. Do you remember this? Anybody does the step aerobic class that you hop over the step with the choreography? No, that was 1988. Do you remember when we were living in, uh, in Ramsey and... I was tr I, I got the bolsa ball and I was doing the choreography on the bolsa ball. You remember that me was, like that writing was a it while down? Later, it was a course. Yeah, it but it was those online courses. So then we just say fuck it. We quitting. I quit my job. Convinced her to quit her job. Said, listen, you can go and get. I could get you an in home training client, and you can go and tr train this person. You can get two sessions and make more more money in two hours of training in home personal training than you do all week from all these jobs combined. Almost, I mean, give or take. So. It's not worth it. So we just said, fuck it. At, at some point, you have to take risks, make bold moves, like put yourself out there and figure it out on the way. Jump out of the fucking plane and, and build a parachute on the way down before you splat on the fucking ground. So like for, that's the way we had to think about it. For those of you who still are not aligned in their mission, still are not aligned in the purpose, you got to like think, okay, if I have 10 jobs, I got to, I got to really align myself and choose one thing and do it perfectly. Choose one thing and don't spread out your energy all over because you need to focus on one thing and one thing only. And that's what's going to lead you to that mastery. That's what's going to lead you to that big, bold uh, move and decision and everything that's happening in your life. So that was a big step for us. It was a huge step for us when we did that. You sent me to this client's house and I remember being, being petrified. I remember like today because it was just the beginning of me training. And I, I had two clients that needed the same exact time. Just imagine. Go and I told one of them, I said, oh no, I'm going to send another one of this a world-class trainer that never did a fucking Holden Hill training session mm -hmm. in her life ever before. I said, no, tons of experience. I'm going to send over to your house because I can't make it and I, I guarantee it's going to be hit. And I, I, got, I got the approval from the client. They're like, actually, you know what? Probably better fit. 
a, a, a female client, female trainer, it was like an older woman. And I went home and said, guess what? Got your new client. You're starting tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. You got to be at her house and the house is like 30 something minutes away. Fist bumps, go and fucking get it. Sometimes you have to, again, make bold moves. Take the fucking risks. You're going to, if you just stick, you're going to be then pushing fucking shopping carts or being a cashier or, or babysitting or doing these bullshit jobs stuck in a fucking cubicle, conforming to society and what the world or your teachers or parents or your friends or the fucking internet is telling you the way to live, live, live life. That's why we started this off with saying your freak freedom ideal lifestyle and how we did things in some weird ass order because that's the, the what worked for us to create the freedom and create this lifestyle. And then so we went from there from the in-home training for a couple of years and then opened up an actual physical location. Talk about another big risk. Like, all right, out of the car is pretty simple. There's no overhead. There's no bills at all. It's like 95% profits when you're just training out of your car, but you're capped off. You're limiting. You're putting yourself, you're limited. You're lacked, lacking that additional, that next level of freedom. So the next level of freedom was actually taking a big, mold, big bold move and making a big risk of opening up a, a studio, an actual in-person boot camp so boxing studio with a five-year lease in needing insurance and needing to pay the bills and electric bills and all that other stuff that you know about. And that we, in, in the long-term vision, would lead to more freedom. That's the way we thought about it. But what really made us to make this decision was that we were traveling to all these different homes and doing in-home training and this... The, the, to, to just spend so much time driving and we were from early in the morning for 5 a.m sometimes i have these sessions at 5 a.m you too to all the way at night time we were like this doesn't work so it, what the, the in-home training was like listen everything is a stepping stone to the next thing from working in a gym for an hourly rate for a big company that really only values the numbers doesn't do things the way that you want to do them doesn't have the same mission or even the way that you operate going to the in-home training was the next step up so the in the, the gym training was the stepping stone to the in-home training once you max out and cap out that or even get close to it it's your freedom gets capped your your potential gets capped the amount of money you can make gets capped the amount of impact you make gets capped because you only have can trade so much time for dollars doing in-home training so we said all right we need to get a facility where we could train big groups we could bring other trainers in we could build a team build a staff you could start delegating shit and automating stuff so we could build it bigger and bigger so the next step of freedom was going from the in-home to the actual location of of a gym and that was the next level level of freedom because again the idea of what we're telling you, this journey we're taking you on, this roller coaster ride. Plus, just the purpose of this show is to help you go from chaos to order to build that freak freedom lifestyle that you want to freaking live and showing you the different ways and how it is possible to fucking have it all. Yes, but the, yes. the, the belief is the, the factor. Like, I, I, I strongly believe that we, th there is a big, bold move, but it's that internal belief that you can do better you deserve better, you deserve more. And that vision that you have in your head is that leading factor uh, towards the these decisions that you make. Because I remember one day we were already, we opened up the gym in Spring Valley, our first location. And I remember going to Ramsey, I think I was going to the doctor and here I am at the store with the kids and I meet one of the uh, training uh, one of the trainers that that was from that corporate gym and she was like the top trainer and I remember in Ramsey and I asked her and she said yeah I'm still working there so it's you know and, and we during this time we already built such a successful gym and the mother bitches and, are probably still spraying perfume in people's faces when you walk into freaking Macy's and and uh, exactly so again go back to that vision and the fact that uh, the vision is there you can't think, okay, I have the vision, I have the dream that everything is going to be going perfectly because it won't. You need to understand that these obstacles will come to you, that these bumps will come to you, these hard, difficult situations, but that you will need to overcome them. And most people stop. The moment that they hit some big rock, some big obstacle, like we hit that in the, immediately. We moved into a location in Spring Valley, I remember, we signed that lease and the first three months we had no clients. I had one client that I was meeting there. The person was paying a group prices and she was only one because I, I, I would show up for her to teach her and to train her. 
And this shows you that, you know, this is not perfect in the beginning. It's hard. And I remember we had to figure out the marketing. We were coming there every day, sitting, coming up with these ideas, brainstorming. How are we going to bring people into the gym besides the clients that we've had? And if, if opening up a new location isn't enough after quitting your jobs, moving in together, taking on a five-year lease, what do we decide to do within like the first year of opening up the freaking place? Let's go have a kid. That's a, a, a perfect way to do it. So now we're like, all right, this is a, what a, a perfect way to realize there's no perfect time for anything. Perfectionism will lead to procrastination. If we waited until, oh, we're going to wait till this gym is successful and running on its own and have a kid, shit. Or wait until you make as much money till you're satisfied. Those freaking kids probably wouldn't even be born yet. So it's like, you know what? We're going to do this and have confidence in our abilities to figure it out. We know we're going to figure this out. So we have a kid, have this gym running, and we're, we went on zero, didn't do any credit. Everything was just paid for. Every dime we had that we saved up from the in-home training, again, Every level of freedom leads to the next level of freedom. This is a perfect lesson. And it's for all everybody. stepping stones of freedom. Every level went to the next level of freedom, except for the next step, we get married. And that's when the freedom just halted. Hold on, hold on. Before the marriage part. She didn't People, get that part. Yeah, I did. I back there laughing. Our cameraman uh, is back there laughing. Listen, we have a cameraman, but I, I totally get it. But I, I, I get it. I get it. But before we're going to move there, there is a lesson because people think, oh my God, I work all these jobs. How can I invest in anything? I spent every dime. I live paycheck to paycheck. Well, you live paycheck to paycheck because you probably go to the restaurants, spend all this money, go spend, spend, spend instead of saving. We were on a saving budget. We wouldn't go out and Whoa, 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 whoa. We? We were on a saving budget? Of course we were. We I just saw a fucking thing on my bank statement today for some $1,200 freaking bed that comes to life from Italy. Mm, good life. We were on a save. We were on a save. No, no. Hold on. No, no, no. No, no, no. Before you... I was on a saving budget. Yeah. Here, and the kids have this joke. They say... <laughs> first of all, I don't get how married couples... Have like separate accounts and separate ex like expenses. Like that's just fucking it, it, weird. I don't know. People even ask. I they think they ask, don't trust each other. Do you guys trust each other? By the way, for those of you who are listening to the podcast and YouTube, make some notes underneath this uh, episode and write it down. Do you have separate accounts or do you have bank accounts together? Why would you decide even to have a separate account? I mean, you guys. Our kids have a joke. Have a, a running Can joke. I you were, you were finished with that. I thought. think it's a payoff. Our kids, this is after the pickle and cocaine thing. That's definitely what. Cameraman, your director is giving you instructions over yes, there. Yes, sir. Cut uh, it. Our kids have this have this running joke, even though it's not separate accounts. But they just say that mommy's money is mommy's money, daddy's money is our money. That's what they Tyson's say. Tyson's money is. That's what they say. That our money. My so, that, so that's that's strange. You won't notice it, but there was a quick cut in the recording, so it's going to get blended together with the editing, but you won't even notice it. But it was I thought it was pretty odd that all of a sudden we get cut out when, when we're talking about the money and your <laughs> money and your accounts and you try to like distractionary techniques to like divert attention about the, the bill coming of new fucking bed from Italy and all this other stuff. I have some superpowers. So let's get let's get back on track here. So we open up the place. The freedom ends once we, 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 we get married. And again, freedom ends. Freedom all this begins. stuff happened first. This. Don't forget, there was quitting the jobs or moving in together, quitting the jobs, starting in a small business, then starting a bigger small business on an actual location, then having a kid, then getting married, and then having another kid, and then opening up a second location. Oh, hold on. And About so there's the some stuff uh, to wrap up thing. into there. A little bit marriage. Because you remember how we were deciding how we're going to, how much we're going to spend on the wedding. We didn't want to have so much money being spent because we didn't want to go into debt. And so many young people, if you are planning to get married and maybe you want to start a business, just do it the other way. Don't spend all your money. Don't start a business. That's just bad move. We have some money. We were able to inv invest in this. And I remember uh, getting involved. Even our clients, we got such a cool... You remember that wedding? This I mean, wedding if you have a epic. ton of money, epic. We were doing squat rows during the wedding. There should be like a separate I mean, episode. if you have tons of money, sure. You want to spend money on experiences and create these experiences and everything you're doing. But if you're... 
have a business that you barely just opened that's barely even starting to get some momentum and just had a kid. He, Tyson was not even... Tyson was one just year old. Just a year old and like a month. Yes. And so oh, you remember. So that's pretty soon into opening the gym and then have a, a, a wedding where you're spending freaking tens of thousands of dollars for one freaking day for a bunch of fucking people that 90% of them, it's what, now 20, 20 22 years later and... 90% of them you don't even talk to. Think about because, it. Because Think about you the know guest who are list. our friends? I Hold bet, on. I bet if we pull up the guest list, there'd be 95% that we have zero contact with if we pull that up. I think so. And some of those most are probably family members. They were, they were, most of them, they were clients from the gym. That's why there was such an epic wedding, guys, because everybody epic. knew each other and everybody were doing squat throws and MC on that. I mean, there was just epic wedding. Let Let's see the MC, the MC. They were just rocking. We should pull up some video tapes. Sure. <laughs> video tapes. So then we have a second kid, and right at the same time the second kid has come, we decide, oh, let's go move locations. And right after we move locations, shortly after opening up a second location. So we moved. We actually upgraded location from one to a bigger, more expensive spot while the second kid is being born. Because why not build up your adversity muscles? Why not challenge yourself? Like, again, don't wait for perfection. Perfectionism leads to procrastination. Don't let it fucking happen or none of this shit would happen. We wouldn't be sitting here doing this podcast with you right now if we didn't just say we're going to make this shit happen. And, and then, hold on. But Tyson, this is important part. Tyson, I remember like today, today, I was training clients having Tyson in my career, like literally in front of me sometimes when I was training clients because I couldn't, the babysitter wouldn't show up. You would have clients babysitting. We would have guys, our clients, the, the admin babysit him. He would be sitting in the playpen when we were running gyms. Literally, you can pull up videos, YouTube videos when he's there, when we both train classes. But listen to this, how this works in a funny, funny way. Sometimes I would think, oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. ah! No, sometimes I would think, oh my God. That was funny. That was Jesus, funny. Jesus, you scared me. That was freaking I'm hysterical. I'm bringing my, my kid and then two kids actually to the gym. Like I am, I am spending sometimes, but I, you know, we were working from 5 a.m. all the way to 8 p.m. We would bring these kids that were with us at, at the gym, but we were pretty much raised by, by the gym. And so many times I would have that guilt that, oh my God, I'm not having enough time uh, when other moms just would hang out and do nothing. And sometimes I would have this in me. I didn't share that much, but right now I can share this and we can do more episodes on this because I think this is Im important for a lot of moms Correct. that they have that guilt. Correct. And and look what happened now. Tyson is actually creating and his own online, his own Correct. separate program for kids to teach kids how to work out. So I believe that this was meant to be. You have a director there giving you instructions. Yes. He's telling you to do the short version. No, but I want to do, this is like but listen, so no, much let's, stuff. Listen, so every, again, we keep adding on more and more freedom, right? Because that's the idea to get to your, and we're still, we're talking now, we've covered, I don't even know, six, seven years by now. I know, but why so fast? We and should, the point is. Can we go back the, and like, six, seven, talk? Six, seven years now, we, and this is not even to the level. <laughs> Ow. He just stabbed me with the pen. Who does this? Look, I'm going like nicely. He has all kinds of weapons here. So six, way. seven years and nowhere near even close to that freak freedom lifestyle. But every step is a building block. Every move and, and decision is another step closer to that ideal freak freedom lifestyle that we're looking for. And so then we think, all right, what's the next step? We did everything ourselves for years, literally from morning till night, clearing the floor. We said, all right, we need to build a team. We need to pull ourselves out of training. Scary fucking move. Lose your ego. You think you could do it all, everything better yourself, but you need to be able to build a team. So we started building a team. Next step from that was, all right, now we want to grow and scale. Open up a second location. Here's the thing. You don't want to grow. You it. make decisions. Not, not don't freaking do it, but do it the right way. Do it the smart way. Do it uh, a little more strategic. We had one location making over a million dollars a year. We opened up two locations. The first six months, yeah, they both combined made it, we're on pace for over a million dollars a year. But once a full year, two locations combined made less profit. Doesn't matter what the revenue is. Pedro says the revenue feeds the ego, the profits feed the family. 
So we had two locations that brought in less profit than the one location by itself. So we started thinking, all right, we want freedom. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fuck up. You're going to make major mistakes. There was hundreds of thousands of dollars put into this new place that made us get less profits. So we started thinking, all right, you got to start shifting, start making some moves. And after a couple of years of the second location opening, we had a family meeting. So the first thing is to keep building, keep coming up, keep trying things, keep attempting stuff, making those bold moves. Every one of your bold moves ain't going to be perfect. You're going to fuck up a lot of those bold moves. What are you going to do? Crumble up, crumble under the pressure and just fold it up and quit and cry and, and, and be a little bitch about it or figure it the fuck out. So we had a family meeting, a yearly meeting, a yearly recap meeting. And we went back and said, all right, this year it was 20, the year of 2020, we're going to either sell the gym by the end of this year or just close it. Because now at this point, we already decided to make the move to California. And because the, that was more freedom, we wanted to be able to run the businesses remotely while we started to build some online stuff and some new business ideas and, and things we were starting out here in California. So again, next level of freedom. Imagine being able to run two biz gyms that are making over a million dollars a year remotely. Next level of freedom is what we were looking for. One of them was a mistake. The second location we said was probably a mistake, shouldn't have done, but that's how you learn. That's how you learn. That's how you get experience. That's how you figure out how to adapt and overcome. And we said in that meeting that that year we were either going to sell or just close the gyms down. And if you would have told me five years before that, after these gyms now are already open over a decade, we're skipping a lot of time here. The gyms are already open for a decade. And if you would have told me that one day, I'd say, we're just going to close them, either sell or close. I said, you're fucking nuts. We're going to have these gyms forever. But again, everything is a stepping stone. We're looking for the new levels of freedom, the new what, what, one step closer to that ideal lifestyle you're looking for and but having the lifestyle has to be specific again guys because if you're just gonna be like a bro like some kind of vision but we just knew what we really wanted we didn't want to be tied up to anything that's what it was we wanted to have uh, uh as much as remote and possible business that we don't struggle uh like in person and you have to make those tough. Now, the next lesson there is make those tough decisions and then just do it. And as Stephen King has a saying, kill your darlings when he's writing a book and the book either it sucks or maybe he has a good book and there's a character that he keeps trying to force into the story or maybe the whole book in general that he might have spent months on writing and it's just not flowing. He doesn't see an end in sight. He's not feeling it. it it's just not he's not connecting with it. He says, kill your darlings, meaning just because it's your little baby, sometimes it's time to fucking cut it and end it and finish it. And that's what we were saying with the gyms. It was time to do it. It was time to let it go. And if you would have told me, like, literally have a tattoo of the logo, which is our same dog. Shit, I'm even wearing the shorts of our gym right now. I wear them almost every day because I have so many of them. If you would have even told Tyson's going to have some of them soon. If you would have told me. <laughs> you would have told <laughs> we me. We need a goat here on the. <laughs> what the hell was that? Fucking Indiana Jones over there. But if you had told me we would say we're going to close the gyms down and if we didn't even sell it, and that's what we did. The, the corona came around. It was a perfect opportunity to close the gym down. So we, we went to New York. We shipped half our equipment here. We have the freaking most amazing home gym set up here with half the equipment. We sold the other half of the equipment, made tons of money on it because people needed exercise equipment at home. A that's freaking another episode. We could win, just talk about win it, situation, which then led to going more online and some bigger business partnerships and relationships here in California in person. And then online coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching. I said, all right. And then we finally bought a house here in California, bought an RV because we wanted the next level of freedom. We're right, we have a house. We're in the location we want. We're doing online coaching now, one-on-one -on -one OTD coaching, operate to dominate in your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business for one-on-one -on -one for entrepreneurs. Next level was, all right, we want even more freedom. So we get an RV shortly after buying a home. Right after getting the RV, literally the first or second trip with the RV, Said, so you know what? The freedom thing. We're going to keep chipping away and getting even more freedom and an even better lifestyle closer to that ultimate freak freedom lifestyle. And the final piece of that was yanking the kids out of the Nazism of this public school system and not even just going with a, a curriculum of the schools while we're homeschooling. We were fortunate enough that this is, I don't know how other states, but that's what in California have these three options that you can go with the curriculum and the state will pay you money. But we were like, we don't want to go with any curriculum. We want to be fully independent. Who 
else can really take care of our kids better than us? And who else is going to be telling me what to do? We can. We are the parents. We wanted to have a freedom of deciding. Plus, we want our kids to go with the direction, uh, uh, with the fulfillment, with the need, the internal need, what they wanted to do. So that was the last step. And I say after, and we almost didn't even know we needed that piece. We thought about it for a couple of years, but we thought we already had the ultimate freedom until we were on that RV trip and we got some letter from the school or some call from the school saying that Tyson was tr- guilty of like truancy. And I had to look yeah. it up. Dan wrote a man. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. I don't need to explain to you where my kid is. And I'm giving him a much better education out here on the road than than you could possibly give, so. But obviously they do this all over the place because I just talked to another friend who just got the same letter from a different state. So here we go. So we realized that was the last real piece. So now I see it. This journey we just take you on, you think it's gonna happen overnight and it's not. And this is what led us to then starting the Alliance, which is, we'll, we'll talk about it in a different episode, but it's a personal discipline development program for other entrepreneurial Couples who are, are partnering with their partner in business and life and kids and, and maybe even homeschooling, but they're running the business together, working from home the way we've been doing it for years. Because we just told you, we just took you on like literally a 20 year journey here in the last 45 minutes. But over 20 years, this shit isn't new. Working together, working from home, living together, entrepreneurs learning these lessons. We didn't just start this. That's the, the problem with things nowadays. Everyone wants a quick fix, everyone wants things overnight, the overnight success, both. People, uh, couples that are doing the same route we went, and also even the coaching world, the industry, people out there who have come into money for a few months, and all of a sudden they're the experts and the coaches, and they're really just fucking fakes and frauds, and and really have not been through the fires and and figured it out and created the frameworks and the blueprint. So, our, the purpose of this show is to show you that it is possible to have this work life fulfillment and work life alignment. Not work life imbalance. So go from the from the chaos to the order. That's what the Russian the Freak podcast is all about. As we wrap up this episode number one, so make sure that you like, share, subscribe to this video. Put your comments down below if you have any questions. Anything we're talking about? Want any more information on any of the the coaching programs that we're talking about? The one on one, the group coaching. There's a female event coming up that that the Russian is running over here. The Indiana Jones. Yeah, you must Indiana wear Jones. you must wear your Indiana Jones hat to that, that June Indiana 3rd. Jones convention. So, put the questions, comments down below. Make sure you subscribe, share, put on the notifications so you do not miss an episode. If you are in business with your spouse, with your partner, your goat, whatever the fuck you're into, and running a business together, working from home, having kids living in this world that we're talking about and looking to build your ultimate ideal freak, freak freedom lifestyle, this is the show that you want to make sure you don't miss a single episode. You can watch the video version on YouTube. You can listen everywhere podcasts are heard and we will wrap it up there for episode number one. Make sure you go and like and subscribe and share. Leave your comments below. We will see you next time on The Russian and The Freak Show. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses. No excuses. A hundred stars, a hundred weeks, didn't change it. Experiments, development, intelligence, and patience. I'll, don't give up on your future. We all start losers. We're all late bloomers. Gotta settle through the sewers. What you say? Yeah, I'ma do shit my way.